The 90s gave birth to a new data storage format, the CD-ROM. With it came the ability to handle larger file sizes and higher quality, attracting the attention of musicians, artists, and game developers alike. The modern conception of video games hadn't yet crystallized. Instead, everyone from David Bowie to Robert De Niro was out there, enchanted by the idea of merging art, music, and video into an interactive landscape. But no other project forever transformed the thought space of what video games could be more than Myst. With its intuitive format and enigmatic worlds, Myst opened the door for generations of game developers to come. Throughout this series, I'm going to be teaching you how easy it is to build your own point-and-click adventure in Game Maker Studio 2. In this first tutorial, we're going to go over rendering your images, preparing them for use in Game Maker, and importing them into the game. Later tutorials will cover turning the view, video transitions, interactive locks, and even 360 panoramas. I'll be using Blender and Darktable to capture and prepare my game images, or footage as I'll be calling it. Both are free, open source tools, because I like using free and open source tools. We're going to be capturing our scene by rotating the camera in 45 degree increments. To do this, we're going to use a handy dandy script that will rotate the camera and take the pictures for us. But remember, you don't have to make your point and click game in 3D. You could do the same thing with your phone camera, just stand in place and take a picture to capture the front, back, left and right of your space, and you're done. It's so quick, it's almost like cheating. You could draw the backgrounds like Cyan did for the manhole. Do whatever makes you happy. First, we model our scene. This isn't a modeling tutorial, so I'm not going to go into that, but here are a few tips. When you've got the view you're happy with, you can click View, Align View, Set Active Camera to View. Pressing zero on the numpad takes you into the camera view. We're going to create our game world as a series of nodes. You can think of each node as a place you're standing in 3D space. Let's set the camera at person height, where we want our first 360 view to be. Next, create a new collection and call it nodes. Make a cube. Call the cube N1 or node 1. Then with the camera selected, press spacebar, cursor to selected, then select the cube and press space, selection to cursor. This will set our node cube at the camera's origin. The node is simply there to mark where each camera position was or should be. If we move the camera, we know we can always snap it back to a particular node view. Make sure to disable rendering of the nodes by clicking the camera icon here so they don't appear in our rendered scene. How many nodes you make is up to you, but keep in mind that every time we move forward, we're jumping the view to the next node. Too many nodes and the jump between spaces will feel insignificant, too few and the jump will feel jarring. We're almost ready to render our first node view. Click on Output Properties and set the resolution of the game images. I'll be using 1920 by 1080 images for this tutorial, but I'd recommend something smaller such as 960 by 540. Mist 4 had a resolution of 800 by 600. Click on the output folder and make some new folders. I like to separate my footage into two main folders, static for backgrounds and animated for anything that moves. Inside my static folder, I'm going to make a new folder for each node. N1 stores the eight images that make up the faux 360 view of my initial location. For this next part, you'll need the Python script that's included when you download the tutorial project. Details in the description. Go to scripting and copy paste the script here. Click run script. Blender will begin taking a snapshot of the view in 45 degree increments. It may take a while and the program might look like it's frozen for a sec, but it's working. Just trust me. Ta-da! It's important to note that I'll be using a cardinal direction system to describe the direction of my views, with forward being north, then northeast, east, southeast, south, and so forth. Make sure your renders are labeled properly so when you import them, you know which one corresponds to which direction. Congrats! Now we've got our first node rendered, it's time to spruce up the footage before sending it to the game. Darktable is essentially the free, open source version of Adobe Lightroom. You could use GIMP, Photoshop, or something else, but I'm going to use Darktable because fuck Adobe. It's a photo editor. Now, I've made all my images, but they look a little flat. They lack oomph. So let's bring the oomph. I've loaded in my first standard image I'll be using as the basis for my color correction. From here, I'm adjusting the parameters such as the lighting, shadows, contrast. I'm even applying a LUT file, making it look nice. I'm not going to go into how to do this. I, I can't tell you what to do with your images. But look, now I've gone from this to this. A little nicer. 
Next, I'm going to save the parameters I applied as a style. I can then apply this style to all the other images I've rendered. Et voila. While we're here, let's talk about compression. In this tutorial, I used 1920 by 1080 images with very little compression applied. I wouldn't recommend this because the file sizes are just way larger than they need to be, and it's going to cause them to load slower. You could see that the game struggles a bit on initial load. This is a do what I say and not as I do situation, but you're going to want to compress your footage as much as you can without sacrificing fidelity, especially if you plan on making a bigger game. Do the compression before you import anything, and it'll save you a ton of time down the line. Create a new room. I like to group rooms based on areas and nodes. Since we only have one area for this project, I'll just separate the rooms per node. The nodes correspond to the ones we made in our Blender project. Next, in the sprite window, create matching folders for the nodes. I label them based on the node and the direction facing that they represent. To import multiple sprites, right-click the sprite folder and click Open in Explorer. From there, drag and drop your footage into the sprites folder. Now, with each sprite properly labeled, go back to the first room you made. With the background layer selected, this is important, drag and drop your sprite image onto the room canvas. Next, create a new sprite. This will represent our global controller. Imagine it's a head, seen from a bird's eye view, with the cone representing the line of sight. This will help us track which direction the player is facing to ensure we're displaying the correct rooms and backgrounds. Make an object, give it the global controller sprite, and name it obj underscore globe underscore controller. Make yet another sprite, name it sbr underscore cursor. I've made a bunch of free to use cursor sprites which are included when you download the project file. See the link in the description. Make a new sprite for each cursor position. We will have a basic neutral cursor, a cursor for pointing left or right, forward, and one for examining objects. Finally, make a cursor object called obj cursor and give it the basic cursor sprite. On your very first room, select the instance layer and drag and drop both the cursor and global controller objects onto the canvas. With that, we're ready to start coding. In the next video, we're going to cover the room system, interaction zones, and a cool head-turning effect to simulate 360 rotations. See you there! Thanks so much for watching this series. I hope it helps you create your own 3D worlds in Game Maker Studio 2. Please feel free to find me on Blue Sky at Uncanny Valerie or on itch.io at valerie-paris.itch.io. Remember, you can get access to the full tutorial project for free. Just check the link in the description. When you download the project, you'll get all of the code used to make this tutorial, including the Blender camera render script and the automatic image cropping script. Finally, you'll get a pack of cursors in four different styles that you can use to build your own point-and-click experiences. Donations are very much appreciated, but everything is totally free to download and use.